I wanted to kind of touch on social security. And then I think we could, should kind of start to wrap this up talking about personal responsibility because, but before we go that direction, social security is fascinating to me. And maybe Christian has some interesting historical perspective on this because for my, uh, very light understanding of this issue, social security was not meant to be a permanent program. And I don't recall who's said this, it might've been Reagan, but someone said something along the lines of there's nothing as permanent as a temporary government program. Is that the case with social security and how can people maintain their own responsibility for their retirement, even with social security taxes, taking money out of their paycheck? What do you think is a good strategy for that? So Lydia, you're absolutely right. Um, When social security was first created in the 1930s, it, it was intended to be a, a, a temporary solution to one of many supposed temporary solutions that FDR came up with during, during the Great Depression as part of his New Deal. Um, most of those agencies and bills and solutions that FDR came up with ended up going by the wayside or lapsing, eventually being folded, vast majority of them. But many of them stayed in place, and the biggest one among them is arguably Social Security itself. The biggest problem that I think Social Security has had isn't even just that it's run by the government. I mean, that alone is a, is a, is a huge problem, but there's plenty of things the government does um, that, quite frankly, it doesn't really have a lot of business doing. So Social Security is not uniquely different in that regard. What makes Social Security so nefarious is, to the heart of what Nick said, is it is, in essence, a Ponzi scheme. And I, I, there's plenty— I. I know people that take out Social Security. Understand, that does not mean that the people who rely on Social Security are the bad guys here. Right. Any more than the people who used Bernie Madoff and got screwed because of it were the bad guys. Oh, no. They're They're the the victims. victims. They're the victims. They're not the bad guys. And this this is what's so nefarious about how the left touches on this issue because they make it out to be that when somebody like Nick or somebody like us says Social Security is a Ponzi scheme, somehow... The left is able to twist that into making it seem like that we are attacking the recipients of Social yep. Security or the people paying into Social Security. I think some of that is the labeling. We, we don't need to use that labeling. What we could do is we could explain that when Social Security was set into place, it took into account the birth rate and it took into account how many uh, young people in life expectancy, right. which right. was lower. Um, it, it took into account all of these things and... They were thinking the birth rate would stay the same. Right now, we're not even at the replenishment rate. And back in the day, they were above the replenishment rate. That's true. Even even that's even that's not entirely true because there there was a couple of things when when Social Security was first like floated out as an ideal. Originally, there's a difference between a welfare program and an entitlement program, right? A welfare program is when I take money from you and I give it to somebody else. An entitlement program is when you are required to pay into something and then you're supposed to re- receive a benefit as a result of, of you know, that tax being collected and things like that. And I don't mean a benefit in like this esoteric sense of, oh, well, we all use the roads. I mean, no, I paid into Social Security and now I'm going to get to take out of Social Security, right? That's, that's the sort of entitlement plan that we're talking about. The problem is, is that the very first Social Security check that went out went out to somebody that had never paid into Social Security. So the the whole concept of what they sold it as is an insurance program, right? Old age retirement insurance was a lie with the very first check they signed. Hmm. Right. We just had the beginning. Yeah, it was from the very beginning set as structurally unstable and unsound. And the only reason, the only reason it has lasted this long was a combination of high levels of productivity and high levels of birth rates. But at the time that it was at the time that it was first instituted, um, I, I don't know the exact numbers, but I think we had something like for every one person that was taken out of it, I think we had close to ten that we're putting into the system. Now we're reaching a stage because of increased life expectancy and everything else. Now we're reaching a stage where it's something like I think three. Um, people are are putting into it with every one taking it out. Well, you can, you can do the math there. If before it was, you know, roughly 10% of the population or or 15% of the population taking and the rest putting in, that's, that has a lot more long-term stability than a system where it's, you know, a third. Right. Which is why the birth rate really matters. But also Nick, um, wasn't it very recently that the um, social security was finally, uh, 
to the point where people had paid in equal to what they were pulling out now? No, uh, or we're not even close to that. That's a, that, that's actually another thing that the left... No, 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 no. I might have said that wrong. It was something to the effect of people who were paying into it um, were, were getting more back than they ever paid into it. And then there was a point where it crossed over and now... They're getting b well, it out less well, than they paid. Into what's it. happening now is that the Social Security fund is being drawn down because more money is being siphoned out of the fund to pay mm -hmm. retirement for a larger generation, the boomers, what, what, than 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 Zoomers and millennials. Mean, I guess what I'm the, asking because is because the birth what, rate is what, falling, as Nick said earlier in this show, because the birth rate is falling, what you have is less people paying into a fund that more people. Are taking out because America is getting older at the same time that the birth rate is falling. The math does not add up, which which goes into a whole nother discussion about the you know the depopulation bomb as they call it. It's well, it's, this is one of the this is one of the things that we hear every single time. I mean, my grandparents have said it. I think everybody's grandparents have said it. I've paid into this all my life, right? And it's owed to me. And the truth of the matter oh, yeah. is, all of us have paid into this all of our lives, and it's owed to us. But it doesn't matter that it's owed to us. It won't be there for my generation. That's well, true. Here, here's, here's the problem with, with people saying that is that they're not wrong. Because no, they're not, not wrong. They pay into, not only did they pay into it, they were forced by law to pay into mm -hmm. it in right. most cases. So I, I get their sentiment. But here's the issue. The, the, people, the people that paid into Bernie Madoff's investment plan, right, or the people that paid into – you know, Sam Bankman freed or whatever it was, they were also victims. They were victims of somebody that mismanaged their money. Well, the government has mismanaged the money. The difference is, is that unlike, you know, SBF or unlike Bernie Madoff, those into, you know, Bernie Madoff couldn't go and then grab, grab a bunch of guys together with guns and then show up and take other people's money in order to give it to you. The government can. The problem is, is that the more the government has to tax other people in order to pay into these funds, the more people either stop being productive or move their productive capacity outside of the jurisdiction of whoever's taken their money. That's one of the reasons why you see people moving from state to state. It's also one of the reasons why it is so dangerous when the federal government talks about things like wealth taxes and everything else, because now it's not going to be, I got to move my business from New York to Florida. Now it's going to be, I got to move my business from New York to Costa Rica. Yes. Right. So, and this is the thing that needs to be understood. It's like all these people that are promising that, oh, we'll just raise taxes. What they're really saying is, don't worry about how we've mismanaged your money because we can go take that other guy's money by force and give it to you until that guy moves. Or until that guy stops making as much money. Or, or Nick, here's the other aspect of that is, I mean, a lot of these unfunded liabilities and a lot of this debt is being shifted to the backs of those who aren't even in the workforce yet. And, and when you look at that, um, I mean, there's a chart that shows, you know, debt for every American. Each child born in the U.S. in 2022 was born with $73,554,000 in debt according and i mean this is a it's it's it, this is a different one it's i mean this, i did put it in this, slack and uh, this kind of gets us to the whole what are we going to do about it but hold on I, like. I, I, I there's just one more piece i wanted to add to that and then when you take into account the fact that the birth rate is continually the fertility rate is not high enough for replenishment and so you're going to have less and less people able to work to pay this debt and more and more people, um, you know, requiring that unfunded liability to stay afloat. It, this is, it's so top heavy. It's completely unsustainable. Unsustain and this is one of the reasons why I love that quote from Thomas Sowell, where he says, it's no wonder that uh, so many politicians are such shameless liars because People want to be lied to about this. That's it's, very they, they well. I mean, that's believe, how we they, got into this. They mess. want to believe it's okay. Yeah, they, they want to believe it's okay. They want to believe that you know that really caring politician that said that the only problem is that we haven't taken enough from greedy people to give to me because I'm truly deserving. Well, right? they always they like, always use the that image of the train, and it's like you just want to throw grandma off the cliff or gra throw grandma yeah. in front of the train. What it really is is they want to throw their children under the train. Well, no, no, no. They want to pretend that there is no train and that nobody needs to be thrown under as long as you give more power and money to them. 
and they will end up fixing everything. And I mean, it, it's it's a great lie. It's a lie that makes you feel good about yourself while you're we've gotten to a point now where people feel a sense of moral superiority while they're pillaging the treasury for themselves. That that is the most pernicious lie out of all of them is the idea that you are inherently a good person by bankrupting this country. And by voting for people to make it more bankrupt, you, well, because, it's, it's, it's not just in your own self-interest. You're a good person for doing that. Yeah. Yeah. It's the, we always say the, the benefit of the thief is the thief doesn't have any the, the thief doesn't steal from you and then come back and ask you to thank him for it. Um, and, and what we're seeing right now and, and, and understand that this is the part two where this is the unpopular thing to say. And yeah, the politicians are doing it, and I hold the politicians accountable for selling people on this idea. But at some point, everyone's responsible for their own actions. Yep. And and so if you're buying into this narrative without without giving a thought to what it actually means and and trying to make sense of it, and, and one thing I try to get people to do too is you, it's like okay, <laughs> this is all fine and good when you put yourself in the position of being the the you know the the hero that is now going to get the money from the evil person that exploited you. But if you're not asking any questions, well, what do you mean exploited? Well, we just mean they make more money, right? Okay, well, that's not exploitation. Hey, and, I, and now, if you're gonna if you're gonna get money at their expense, if you're gonna get that, okay, that's a that's a that's pillaging, right? That's looting. I, I'm sorry, but I, I fail to see at what point in this conversation, you know, you you've you've operated in a way that is morally justifiable. I I just want to bring but up it, again, but. But if a politician can convince you that, no, 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 this is entitled to you, it's been stolen from you, and I'm going to be the guy that goes and gets it and takes it. From, and not only is it good that I take this, it's good that you receive it because it was yours anyway. Why? Well, because you voted for me. <laughs> I want to make one quick point before we move on to the personal responsibility aspect of this. Um, you know, we have to put our own budgets together for our own individual finances. And for me, and I think this is the same for everyone, the largest percentage of my budget goes to taxes. And Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid take up a significant portion of those taxes. And what's so frustrating to me is that the second largest budget item outside of taxes for me is retirement investments. And outside of Social Security, not including its 401k, IRA, all that great stuff. What if I was able to take everything that's currently going into the Social Security budget? You'd be a millionaire by your 40s. Put it on my own retirement investments yeah, I've, that I've, I control. I, I've done the math. Like, like the vast majority – this is what's so nefarious about this is that the vast majority of Americans, if you took the amount of money that they have to pay into Social Security, they, they would all be millionaires by the time they retired. Yeah. They would all be millionaires well, and, by and, the time they retired. And here's the, here's the important thing to understand. If they've been right? able to because invest again, it themselves. And, and, and it's interesting. You look at places like Singapore or Chile, they've done things like this, and, and the retirement stability in Singapore is significantly higher as a result because that money was put into productive funds. And, and quite frankly, I'm just going to call them out. The Democrats always try to scare people that, oh, you're privatizing this and you're going to make it, you know, people are going to make bad investments. Look, if, if you put the same amount of money that you had been getting in social, or that you've been getting, putting into Social Security for like 30, 40, 50 years, if you had put it into just like a generic fund that followed the New York Stock Exchange, right? We're not talking about, you know, one or two sketchy investments. We're talking about, I just want the overall stock market average. You, you would have had multiples and multiples more money than you would ever be able to pull out of Social Security. And oh, by the way, when you died, you would be able to hand over that additional yeah. wealth yeah. to somebody else. And the same people that are talking about, well, this is unfair because you know certain people have generational wealth and certain people don't. Yeah, you're creating the situation where you've created ridiculous dependency where people can't generate that sort of wealth and they can't even generate that sort of wealth in their retirement. To be able to hand over to future generations, because when you die, I mean, other than like a, a smaller, uh, you know, you know, portion of it going to like a spouse or whatnot, that's it. It's gone. It doesn't matter. If, it doesn't matter if you paid three times as much into Social Security as you ever took out. You don't get the other three. That goes somewhere else, right? So th th this is just a poorly managed thing from the beginning. 